Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports, and I hope that your Tuesday morning is starting off just like you want it to. Uh, we're going to talk uh, fantasy baseball. You know, I told you over the, I think it was yesterday's show, that I had two drafts over the weekend, and we went over one of those yesterday. We're going to talk about the other draft today. Uh, we're going to also, I want to thank you all for being in the chat room. You know, I tell you what's amazing about this time of uh, season that we're in. Uh, not baseball season yet, but the pre-baseball season. How about that? Is that uh, you guys in the chat room are incredible. I mean, I look at the numbers of people in the chat room every day, and I was worried, really, that with baseball being delayed, that the chat rumors <laughs> would be you know, less and less. It's just the opposite. You guys are incredible. I mean, it's more and more. And so thank you for being uh, with me this morning. Lenny, thank you for leading off and hitting it out of the park. Great show. And for you guys listening on, uh, you know, delays on, on, on podcast networks like iHeartRadio or uh, Apple Podcast, uh, thank you for tuning in. So let's get right into it. First of all, let's talk some baseball news. Uh, of course, yesterday, you've heard this by now, uh, Commissioner Manfred has announced that consistent with other national guidelines, the baseball season will be pushed back. We do not know a definite starting date. So fantasy drafts and fantasy chat rooms go on, right? And here's the thing. Think about players who actually benefit from this time off. You know, you've got several teams, several injured players coming off injury, and now they get time to rest or recover. And, and I think about several. Let's talk about those before we talk about my draft that happened this weekend. First of all, how about Chris Sale for the Red Sox? You know, I think this time off just gives Sale more time to reload those fastball bullets in that left arm and probably give Sale a good chance to come out with guns blazing. If this season is delayed till around the 1st of June, and frankly, I think that is a possibility at this point, Think about Sale having you know, two whole months, really, or a little more than that, to you know, get ready for the season and the endurance issues of a season. Uh, they're not going to exist anymore. You know, he's, he's, he, he doesn't have to play six months. He wants to play four. And the rest will just be incredible. What does that do for his fantasy value. Well, of course, it increases his fantasy value. And another player on the Red Sox team, Alex Verdugo, he was battling some injuries, and he just came over in the trade for Mookie Betts from the Dodgers. He was battling some back issues. Didn't know if he'd be ready by opening day or not, but now he should certainly be ready to go uh, with a full arsenal of, of power and average that would only help his fantasy value. Every team has players that fit that category. The Yankees, wow. You've got Paxton, who had the back surgery uh, early in the winter, and they were saying, well, it might be the 1st of May, middle of May. Well, now, with the season delayed, Paxton will have a full season, or you know, compared to everyone else, no one's going to have a full season. You're not going to see 50 home runs this year. You just don't have time to see it. But you're going to have these players back. Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, the same analysis applies. And now you draft differently. I think, I looked at draft boards over the weekend. Again, I was drafting two fantasy teams, and I saw where Judge had gone down to like number 50. Well, if Judge is going to play opening day now, based on the new opening day, that gives me more ability to draft him earlier, and his fantasy value is much higher. Freddie Freeman, barking elbow. Now time for Freddie Freeman to be fully recovered and to deliver 
Freddie Freeman numbers for the entirety of the season whenever it begins. The list is long. Let's talk about Verlander. You know, Justin Verlander went goes out with a lat injury. Now he has two months to recover from that oblique lat situation. He should be fully recovered, and you shouldn't have any hesitancy drafting Justin Verlander in upcoming drafts. It's It just adds a new dynamic to fantasy drafting this year what has happened with the regular season. So I was getting ready to draft uh, my second fantasy team of the day, uh, the first one I told you yesterday about. So Sunday night we sat down. It's an eight-team league, and I I really love eight-team leagues because at the end of the 30 rounds, you've got some pretty good players, and so does every team. So you're not fighting for the dregs of the league. You're You're fighting for some really good players, and the way this league operates is it's a one-time draft, uh, daily lineup set. So there's something to do every day. So I'm, I'm reading the league rules, of course, and it's an OPS league, not a batting average league. So a player like a Joey Gallo, much more important in an OPS league than, say, he would be where batting average is considered. So you have to know your, your league rules. And now that you have this break, I don't know if you, your leagues have been postponed or not, but certainly know your league rules before your draft and know how players fit into those league rules. So I'm putting players in my queue. I always do that. And I've got the second, excuse me, the fifth overall pick. So I'm sitting there looking at the board and I'm thinking, okay, it's a very power-driven league. Total bases is a category. Slugging percentage is a category. Of course, home runs is a category. So RBIs and runs scored. So I'm looking for for power hitters in this league. Uh, Net stolen bases, not so much stolen bases, but net stolen bases. So I'm the fifth pick, and the first player off the board is Mike Trout. No shock. The second player off the board is Ronald Acuna Jr. Now I'm looking and thinking, okay, is will I get a Yelich? Will I get a Bellinger? Where will I go with this? But no, Yelich is third and Bellinger is fourth. So now I'm queued up at number five. And now I've got a dilemma. I'm thinking, do I go with Garrett Cole, who, you know, is a Yankee. I'm a Yankee fan. How cool that would be. Um, or do I go with Mookie Betts? Or do I go with Jacob DeGrom? And, and the Uh, you know, you got a, just a few seconds or a minute and a half to make those decisions. And so I'm looking at what Mookie Betts did last year in his body of work for Boston when he was technically said to have an off season. And when you look at what Mookie Betts did last year during what would be considered a down year, he hit 296, he hit 29 home runs. He scored 135 runs, and runs is a category in my league. Stole 16 bases, and now he's with the Dodgers, of course, where he's going to lead off. And so, here you go. I pulled the trigger on Mookie and did not go with Garrett Cole. So by the time it rolls back around to me with the fourth pick in the second round, Cole is gone. Guys, I've got to make a quick business call. I just got a text. So I'm going to interrupt the uh, podcast. Bear with me, please. I guess in light of the coronavirus, uh, things just happen. I'll be back in about five minutes. I will be back. And we'll finish talking about this draft and some other minor league players. But if you will, just bear with me. I'll be back shortly. Uh, I'll be, uh, again, about five minutes from now. Thanks, guys.